Okay, you have learned in the past what generic intervals are. Now we're getting into specific intervals, which are, uh, we'll explain what the difference is between generic and specific intervals. So specific intervals are measured both on the staff and in half, half steps on the keyboard. So when you learned about generic uh, intervals, C to D and C to D flat were both uh, considered an interval of a second. But uh, C to D is one half step larger than C to D flat. So in a specific interval, a major second is made up of two half steps. So C to D is a major second since it is a generic second on the staff and two half steps on the keyboard. E to F sharp would be another example of a major second. A major third is made up of four half steps. So C to E is a major third. You see those four half steps to get there. E to G sharp is also a major third. There are four half steps from E to G sharp. A perfect fourth is made up of five half steps. And you might, there are tunes that will teach you that will help you to recognize um, some of these intervals as well. F to B flat is also a perfect fourth. A perfect fifth is made up of seven half steps. So C to G is a perfect fifth. B to F sharp is a perfect fifth. A major sixth is made up of nine half steps, so C to A is a major sixth. E flat to C is also a major sixth. A major seventh is made up of 11 half steps, so C to B is a major seventh. There are 12 half steps in, a, um, in an octave, by the way. D to C sharp is also a major seventh. It's another example. Finally, a perfect eighth or a perfect octave is made up of 12 half steps. So C to C is a perfect eighth. The terms major and, and perfect refer to the interval's quality. So only seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths can have a major quality. Firsts, fourths, fifths, and eighths use perfect instead. Now, minor intervals we're going to talk about. A minor interval has one less half step than a major interval. So, for example, since C to E is a major third, four half steps, C to E flat is a minor third because it has three half steps. Go down one half step, that one. E to G is also a minor third since E to G sharp is a major third. Since minor intervals transform from major intervals, only seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths can be a minor. An augmented interval has one more half step than a perfect interval. Since C to F is a perfect fourth, five half steps, C to F sharp would be an augmented fourth, which is six half steps. F to B is also an augmented fourth, since F to B flat is a perfect fourth. Major intervals can be augmented by adding a half step. For example, since C to A is a major sixth, nine half steps, C to A sharp is an augmented sixth. It has 10 half steps. 
D flat to B is also an augmented sixth, since D flat to B flat is a major sixth. A diminished interval has one less half step than a perfect interval. So since C to G is a perfect fifth, seven half steps, C to G flat would be a diminished fifth, six half steps. B to F is also a diminished fifth, since B to F sharp is a perfect fifth. Minor intervals can also be diminished by subtracting a half step. Recall that C to B is a major seventh, it has 11 half steps, and C to B flat is a minor seventh, it has 10 half steps. C to B, flat, B double flat is a diminished seventh, it has nine half steps. This chart shows the relationship among the different interval qualities. So seconds, thirds, sixths, and sevenths can be either augmented, major, minor, or diminished. First, fourths, fifths, and eighths can be augmented, perfect, or diminished. This chart shows the number of half steps that each specific interval contains. So and an interval of a first is going to be perfect with zero half steps or augmented with one half step. Or an interval of a sixth can be diminished with half steps, minor with eight half steps, can be major with nine half steps, or it can be augmented with ten half steps. You'll notice on the sixth that there's not any interval um, in the perfect. That's because it's only called major, not perfect, because uh, some of them are called perfect instead of major. This is a lot to uh, learn and understand, but it's a formula. Once again, there are so many patterns in music, and if you understand the formulas just like math, then you can essentially create whatever you want in music because you understand how the patterns are created and how they fit together. And we will be using these intervals to determine how to write chords and arpeggios and scales and different things like that as well. Good luck in learning your specific intervals and how to create and write those.